Hello, welcome to Elizabeth Reads. We are now on chapter eight of Jemima Small versus the Universe. So I have chapter eight, Satellite. On the bus home from school, all I could think about was dad seeing the letter. It wasn't like the one I got when I qualified for the Clifton on C spelling bee or the note from the head teacher that came with my SAT's results saying, outstanding, congratulations, Jemima or the one Jasper and I got thanking us for taking part in the beach cleanup ages ago. This letter was nothing like those. This letter was bad, like being in trouble, but worse. Jasper leaned over the back of my seat and said, I scored 92% in my science test today. I carried on looking out of the window. Shame, better luck next time. Shame I'm too old to enter brainiacs, you mean, because he raised his hands and said, I would crush you like an enemy. He chopped the back of my seat karate style. If we didn't both have dad's sludgy sand colored hair, I'd question if we were even related. I doubt it, I said, unless they do quick fire round on how to be a massive nerd. Ha, the whole show is being a, is about being a massive nerd, Jemima. That's why you'll probably win. I doubt it because I'm not entering. What, how come? Jasper stuck his hand in front of my face to offer me some strawberry millions. I pushed it back. They'd probably been in his blazer pocket since last year. I thought Brainiacs was your favorite show. Well, it's not, so don't mention it to Dad, okay? I looked out at the gray mist hanging over the sea. I could just see the lighthouse in the distance. It was built in 1882 to replace the previous one that was destroyed by fire. That one was built in 1759, and its tower was Dodecagono. It means it had 12 sides. You learn about stuff like that when you hang out at Clifton Museum all summer instead of the beach. Okay, so what was that meeting about in sports hall? I turned round to face him. How do you know about that? I saw you going in there. My form's opposite. Jasper cracked his knuckles and began shuffling a pack of cards. If you're in trouble, I'm telling Dad. I sighed. There was no way I was telling Jasper the truth. Not that it's any of your business, but it's a special class Mrs. Savage is setting up. It's for, um people with high IQs. Jasper screwed up his face. Really? So what was Brandon Taylor doing there? I sighed again. It was so typical of Jasper to spy on everyone. I don't know. Maybe he went in by accident. Jasper looked at me, trying to figure out if I was lying or not. I turned back round and he started telling me about this new magic trick he was learning. As usual, I didn't listen. Jasper thinks doing magic somehow makes him special, but anyone can do it. You can literally buy boxes of it on the internet. It's nothing special or supernatural or spectacular. It's just buying the right equipment and practicing for ages in your bedroom. Eventually, he stopped talking and put his headphones on. I pulled my library book out of my rucksack and shifted on my seat so my back was against the bus window. I opened my book and placed the letter inside so Jasper couldn't see it. The special program of lessons on healthy living will be delivered by fitness and nutrition specialist Gina Grantley Bond and will include a range of learning opportunities including weight management, healthy eating, teamwork, and mental well-being. I kept reading. The class didn't sound that bad in a way. It would be easier than saving up for facial surgery and probably less painful than getting all my fat sucked out. Miki would probably be rehearsing for the production on Fridays anyway. I liked learning new stuff and Heidi and Harry would be there. Hey, look at Big taking up two seats. I looked up. It was a boy sitting on the back seat. I closed my book and turned back to face the front. I thought about the boys who shouted, Fat Club, earlier. How long would it be until it was all around school? What if this Gina person made us run laps of the field at lunchtime in our PE kit? It would be even more humiliating than getting weighed in science. I had to convince Dad not to sign the form. Maybe I could say Mrs. Savage was a dictator. Although I didn't know how dad felt about dictators, he probably liked them. When I got home, a strange smell was emanating from the kitchen. I peered through the bead curtain. Dad had his head in a recipe book, turning the page back and forth and tutting. He did that a lot when he was cooking. I pushed the beads to one side and leaned against the worktop. Hey, how was school? Okay, I lied. What are you making? Kale soup, he said, wiping his hands on the tea towel over his shoulder. Kale soup? It was definitely weird. My dad never made anything healthy sounding. Maybe it was Auntie Luna's idea. If there were any strange occurrences in our house, they usually came from Luna. There was a load of kale on offer at the supermarket, Dad said. Or they could be explained by a special offer at Asda. 
Dad, I need to talk to you about something, I said, feeling like my intestines were filled with medieval rodents. Dad looked up from the saucepan. He was about to say something when Jasper strolled in to boast about his science test result. That's great, Jasper. Well done. Now, have you got some homework or something to do upstairs? Your sister wants to talk to me. Sure, Jasper said. No problem, Dad. I'll get right on it. He raised his eyebrows at me like I should somehow be impressed with his sucking up skills. Dad turned down the cooker, then pulled out two chairs from the table. I waited until I heard Jasper's bedroom door close. Then I sat down and pushed the letter across the table. Dad didn't say anything for ages. It's an abomination, really, I said to break the silence. Mrs. Savage runs the school like a dictatorship. Dad kept his eyes on the letter and his face looked serious. Worse than when he found out about the science speakers. Oh, Jemima. I didn't know what that was supposed to mean, but it wasn't good. He rubbed his hand across his beard and let out a long sigh. I don't know what to say. He looked at me and smiled, but something in his eyes made me want to cry. Listen, I don't want you to worry about this, okay? I'm not worried about it, I said, half lying, maybe fully lying. I mean, obviously there's a problem, he said, and it felt like being smacked in the face with a football. I don't know what I was expecting him to say, but it wasn't that I was a problem. I could feel tears starting in my eyes again. It's just, you've always been chubby, you know, ever since you were a baby. Great, I was a fat baby. Dad laughed, and then his face went serious again. I'm sorry, Jemima. I mean, you've always been how you are. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we should have done something sooner. The way they said it here, I feel responsible. He picked up the letter and put it straight back down again, probably because he'd already read it ten times. Oh, geez, with things like this, I really wish your mum had stuck around. He sighed. I'm sorry, this isn't your fault. It will be okay. I don't know what else to say. You could say I don't have to do the class. Oh, Jem, you've got to do the class. In fact, this Gina Grantley Bond sounds deranged. No, Dad laughed. She sounds great. It says here she's got a lot of experience with, I stared at him, young people. And look, she's even worked with a British Paralympic team. That could be a lie. Dad sighed. I don't think Mrs. Savage would lie. Well, you don't know her. Anyway, I'm not doing the class because I thought of those boys again and the words fat club echoing around the sports hall. It's illegal. He tutted. Don't be ridiculous. Of course it's not illegal. The class is designed to help you. Well, I don't need that kind of illegal help. I can lose weight on my own in my bedroom. Dad looked sadly at me across the table, probably remembering that time before I started at Clifton Academy when I tried doing a high-intensity workout from YouTube. Dad came running up the stairs saying it sounded like it was entertaining a herd of buffalo. Obviously, I didn't try that again. Jemima, honestly, I think this is the best way. Get you some proper support from, you know, a professional. He signed the form at the bottom of the letter. I looked at him like he was signing my death sentence. Don't look at me like that. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It'll be fun. He was outright lying now. You'll make some new friends who, you know, understand what it's like. You love learning facts and things, don't you? You'll just be learning about healthy things and not quantum particles. Great timing with this kale soup, hey? Dad got up and stirred the bubbling pan of soup that apparently I'd be eating for dinner, probably for the rest of my life. You know what? We should start playing basketball again. We've barely used that hoop since I put it up. He patted his stomach. I could do with getting back in shape myself. We'll do it together. He took out a teaspoon and tasted the soup. Hmm, not bad. I found out later that was a lie, too. Jemima, I know just having me isn't the same as having a mum around, but I am here. If you ever want to, you know, and you've got Luna. We both looked out of the steamed up windows at Auntie Luna's wooden cabin in the back garden. Dad built it ages ago after Uncle Alfie left her. Luna's heart broke so badly she had to go to hospital. She's okay now, but she has to live with us so Dad can make sure she doesn't get poorly again. Also, Uncle Alfie emptied their bank account so she didn't have much choice. Luna says money's not important. It can be replaced, but nothing can fix a broken heart because hearts are irreparable. I think she has the same empty feeling in her heart like I have about mum, only hers is Uncle Alfie shaped. You should talk to Luna about this, Gem. I appreciate her advice can be a little out of this world, to say the least, but anyway, the point is we can all go on this health kick together, me, you, and Jasper. Dad squinted at the recipe book pink Himalayan salt. 
He tutted. What's so special about the Himalayas? Well, I said, the Himalayan range is almost 1,500 miles long. It's spread across five countries and contains the highest peaks in the world, including Mount Everest. It has one of the largest deposits of snow and ice on the whole planet, after the Arctic and the Antarctic, obviously. In fact, the name Himalaya means the abode of snow. I thought for a moment. I guess the salt's pink because of the mineral content. Tat stared at me. I don't know where you get it from. I shrugged. Probably weight rose. Dad walked over and rubbed my head. I meant you and your encyclopedic knowledge. How did you get to be such a genius, hey? I don't know, I said. Must come from mum's side of the family. <laughs> Probably. Without thinking, I said, hey, guess what? Our school is... Then I stopped. I looked down at Dad's signature on the letter. Confirmation of how totally unsuitable I was for Brainiacs. It was best not to even tell him about it. Um, doing Mary Poppins for the Christmas production. Mickey's auditioning. Good for him. You'll have to get us some tickets. Now herbs, he said. Back in a minute. He opened the back door and went over to the little herb garden Auntie Luna planted a few summers ago. I stared out of the window for ages, feeling like a satellite orbiting a planet. Totally alone. Realizing that the only thing that was ever going to matter about me was my size. It was only Friday night, but already I was dreading school on Monday. Everyone at school had probably already shared stuff about Fat Club, I wished I could just stop time, stay sitting at the kitchen table forever, just ideally not with a smell of kale soup in the background. All right, that's chapter eight. See you next time for chapter nine.